Councilman. Be right into uh, county administrative update. All righty. We'll be quick this morning. There are 10 resolutions on the agenda for the regular voting meeting today. A couple of notes. There is a resolution to um, appropriate the amount appropriated uh, for IT, um, a cybersecurity uh, expenditure. This is already placed into the 25 budget. There was some still remaining in this year's budget to cover a portion of this, but still do need to appropriate about 27,000 for that. Uh, we also have a resolution to approve a grant agreement between the commissioners and Ohio EMA for the fiscal year. This is, says 22. Is that correct? Oh, John's gone. Um, we're uh, having IT issues, so <laughs> bear with us. Uh, hazardous materials emergency preparedness grant for year three. So that is correct, fiscal year 22. Also have a resolution authorizing the engineer to submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission State Capital Improvement Program and execute contracts as required. Jeremiah, would you like to touch base on that? Uh, just formal procedure for us to take take part in the uh, typical grants we get for bridges and, and culverts and various roofway work. Covers a lot of things. Perfect, thank you. Uh, it looks like we may have her. Yeah, so that's good. I just don't have mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then we also have a resolution from the county prosecutor uh, on the VOCA grant, and that would be for October 1st, 24th through September 30th, 25. Uh, Amy, Austin, anything to add on that one? Thank you. Art, any budget update? Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Rochelle, calendar review and invitations received, please. Thank you. The Fairfield County Job Fair will be October 17th from 4 to 6 at the Fairfield County Workforce Center. The CCAO Regional Housing Summit will be at the Wigwam Event Center on October 18th at 8 a.m. Ohio University's Executive Vice President and Provost will visit on Thursday, October 24th at the Raymond S. Wilkes Art Gallery at OUL. The following correspondence was received, a uh, letter from the City of Lancaster's Engineering Department regarding East Main Street Sidewalk Improvement Project, a press release from the Office of the County Auditor titled Fairfield County Auditor Announces Receipt of State Award of Distinction, a memo from the Fairfield County Auditor regarding the November MCJDC meeting, local government funds formula, and GIS Day. The Fairfield County Auditor also provided her wins of the week. We received a flyer from the Fairfield County Parks District correspondence regarding industrial solar projects and the Lancaster Fairfield County Chamber newsletter. That is it. Okay. You sure fix any old business? Yeah, so uh, Ray mentioned the fair and uh, you and I got to go Thursday night and uh, again, I think for the fifth or sixth year in a row, at least as long as I've been here, uh, successfully did it with uh, our engineer Jeremiah up and a couple other folks uh, to win the grand champion steer. Uh, the bidding was a little light this year, surprisingly. There weren't a lot of folks there uh, at the time that we were bidding. Um, so we also got to bid on the second steer. I don't know if that's called the champion or the champion, champion steer. Um, and we're able to successful with that. So um, I'm always impressed. We go out there and you know we walk through all the barns and see all the kids and their animals and it's uh it's impressive you know, those those four age kids um that just work and work and work and work and they're the future leaders of this county and it uh makes me feel good about where we're headed so uh well it was beautiful uh it was a great you know it seemed like a great fair week uh talked to cheryl ricketts uh who's on the fair board uh, Sunday night, and she said that they felt like they had a great turnout this year. Um, final numbers will be in in a couple of weeks, but uh, it's a great week for Fairfield County. That's all I, I, that's all I got. So, you know, I uh, also uh, had the privilege of uh, going to the fair. I initially uh, went, uh, in, in, went with the uh, director of ag agriculture for the state of Ohio and actually spent some time with him going around looking at the different uh, 
displays, animals, and so on and so forth. And then uh, Thursday afternoon, myself and, and my wife Anne, we went through all the animal um, complexes, but especially where all the goats were. And my wife <laughs> talked to every every goat, petted every goat in the building, and, and it <laughs> took us a long time. There's a lot of goats there. <laughs> <laughs> and Anna, my wife Anna has never met an animal she doesn't like. <laughs> so it, it was very, it was fun. Did you take any home? <laughs> no. Not this time. No, but uh, the 4 H'ers, you know, that uh, it, it's really pretty amazing when you see these, you know, eight, nine hundred thousand pound uh, steers and you have some little fellow or, or girl. It's trying to move them around, you know, about 60 pounds of pack. And it's pretty amazing at their handling skills and everything else that goes goes along with, uh, with uh, being in the 4 H. I always think about when I was in the 4 H and I, I had a pig. <laughs> the pig got loose and ran throughout the, <laughs> and threw out the bear and took a couple hours to catch it. And I, I, I didn't make it for showmanship. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Fisher sure fix any new business. Um, it, so we did uh, meet with Greenfield Lancaster last week, and we're now preparing. Uh, we're uh, at a stage where both Lancaster and Greenfield are comfortable with the proper of Economic Development Agreement and the um, new community authority. Thank you to Holly. Thank you to Tony. Thank you to Rick uh, for participating in all those meetings. Um, so now. Uh, Richards and I are preparing a presentation to make to Greenfield. Um, we understand that that's going to be a, a challenging conversation because there's a lot of folks in Greenfield that don't want any growth at all, um, but growth is coming. So uh, this presentation will be to show them why we feel growth is coming um, and uh, what will happen if they do nothing, right? Um, and we feel like we've got a compelling argument, so we just have to uh, put that together and help them build that tool chest so they can manage that growth and they can take advantage of the growth. Um, presenting at the uh, Fairfield County Mayor's Association tomorrow night, um, Jason Henderson, who's in charge of that, has invited me to come speak, so i uh, looking forward to that. And then this Friday, we've got... Um, Kind of the housing symposium for the central district of the ccao and i was on a call yesterday um with the folks who are participating in that and uh we've got a pretty impressive lineup um and i saw the list of folks who had registered and uh it's going to be a full room a lot of folks around central ohio trying to figure out how to deal with growth right so um should be a great meeting. um Looking forward to it, and I appreciate all the support from Ani as we were working to get this started. So uh, that's all I've got. Everybody, anything additional, Dad? Um, well, you know, we've already heard mention of winter being here and whatnot, and I've, I've said for the last couple of commissioners' meetings that we're uh, we're getting ready for snow and ice removal and finishing up construction. We're still in the middle of that. Um. Some of the other things kicking off right now, as the leaves come off and the weeds thin out, we start our bridge inspection, which uh, is enjoyable for me because it gives me a good opportunity to get out there and look at stuff. So I'd like to bring that up because uh, I think people out there need to hear that every year we're looking at every single bridge underneath of it, um, going through a process that's handed down from the federal government through ODOT to us that we have to follow for those inspections. That all has to be turned in back to those guys and approved before it's done. So there's a pretty good uh, layered system looking at these bridges from different angles and whatnot as we go through the years. Oh, I, I heard something kind of been interesting this week where they're talking about some of these the federal government's pushing EV trucks and buses and so on and so forth. And obviously, these rigs weigh a whole lot more. And one of the things was talked about was a lot of the bridge aren't capable of handling that kind of additional weight. Do you have have you seen anything on that? Yeah, that's uh that's a 
really big topic with the County Engineers Association and, and ODOT right now. Um, so our bridges are, are designed to carry a certain weight. All right, it, you know, when somebody builds a building, they design those members and that building to hold up what they're supposed to hold up. Now there are factors of safety in that. There are bridges also. Bottom line is, um, we pick a number that we design to for whatever reason that is and we design to, okay? Now they want to bring in something that's much bigger than that and put it on the same infrastructure. That infrastructure was not designed for these heavier vehicles. Uh, it seems pretty simple to me. Maybe it's because I'm a civil engineer, but um, it's ludicrous. I, I mean, you talk about a, a, a major safety infraction to, to the traveling public. I mean, starting to put vehicles that are that are way heavier than what the infrastructure is designed for. And then um, expecting everything to be okay is just ludicrous to me. Boy, Lisa, how are you? Yes, you have any current update right now. Dr. Brown. Deeply appreciative of the Fair Board partnerships. This year, more than years in the past, we did several in services about weights and measures, and it went across very smoothly. It's deeply appreciative of that partnership and their willingness to be our communication partners. Last week, I conducted a presentation, when we get the name right, the Tri-County Realtors Association. It includes Licky, Franklin, and Fairfield. And, uh, that presentation went very well. Franklin and Licky are in the midst of their sexennial update. We are not. Ours is next year. Um, but we provided some good information that helped them understand that process. They wanted to purchase our Jeopardy game, and we indicated that that was not for sale, but we would certainly share it with them. Uh, they wanted to use it in Licking and in Franklin counties. In September, I conducted a presentation for GFOA. I'm going to repeat that presentation upon the request of AGA, the Association of Government Accountants, and the state auditor asked me to do an in-service for their staff on that same presentation. So that will make um, almost 60, I think it's 59 um, for this year. We had an individual goal of 50, and so we're exceeding that in the calendar year. The making numbers count in 60th, I think, we count that one. And that is uh, tomorrow. Very excited about that. And some elements of the other GFOA presentation will be within that um, presentation. However, that's mostly focused on year-end processes because um, that's what's most relevant for that group. Distribution of local government funds seems to be a conversation amongst um, CCAO and some of them on CAAO. Um, in Fairfield County, I put in the memo this week, the specific formula, it has not changed for Fairfield County. In our budget commission meetings, we keep a standing agenda item in case there's anybody who wants to put forth um, any comments about that, even though we're only required to do that particular formal request um, once every five years. And Brandon's not here, but I have thanked him um, unbeknownst to me, several years ago, I think he reached out to John Slater to suggest that the clerk of court sell dog licenses. And logistics didn't work at that time, but they are working at this time. And him and Beth have been talking, and so we will see at Fairfield Center an opportunity in December and January to purchase dog licenses in that area. Got some training and some logistics to take care of, but very excited about that. Thankful to Brandon for his openness. Yeah, so thank you for bringing up the local government funds. Um, looking at the formula that we've got, um, county is 45%, park district is 1%, Lancaster 27, um, villages are 11, and townships are 16. And I'm wondering, you say it's been that way for since 1996 and was it done at that time based on population or yes and um, within the percentage that is of the total population is then applied to the villages to the townships so it does change from an individual granular basis but from a composite basis that percentage remains the same and what is the process for reviewing those and reallocating if we would change the formula itself yep um Every five years, there is a formal meeting held at the Budget Commission where we ask if there's any 
ideas, questions, comments about that particular formula, and there have been none. And has that meeting already occurred for this year? It has. Okay. And as I stated, we keep a standing agenda item on every budget commission meeting in case there's anyone who would have input about that at any point in time. I'd be happy to talk with you about that more later. So uh, you, you mentioned uh, State Auditor Keith Faber. And I was actually with him last night, and he speaks very highly of Fairfield County. So, very nice. Tony, Keith Faber. Great, you always have something to say. Uh, had a chance to show off the Workforce Center uh, to some groups the last couple of weeks. Uh, a group of folks from Shockton came because, uh, uh, let's just say, the governor's office was meeting with them and they were talking about all these things they want to do. And they're like, well, Fairfield County already did those things, so why don't you go talk to them and see, let's see how they did it? So, uh, built a good relationship with them. And then last week we had uh, the Manufacturing Extension Partnership for our region come in town, along with Jobs Ohio and one Columbus. And two of the people in that meeting were here when we first uh, had the idea. They said, we remembered, and this is just a glimmer glimmer in your eye, uh, this Workforce Center. And uh, we're like, just to see the, work, the engineering tech lab and all of this come to fruition. And it's very impressive. And uh, here's a question. Uh, one of those folks had been here since. Uh, we took it over, so he was just so you have a, a job fair this week. Job fair, yep, on Thursday. How many do you expect to? Uh, employers were around 60, and last year we had a couple hundred. Or job seekers, we do it later in the day, so it's you know, the high school one in the spring, and high school students can come, but these are more ready to work. Uh, Dan, you got it fixed. Uh, we did, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, just wanted to sort of reiterate we celebrated October being Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, and uh, at this point, for all county employment, we're at 68% complete for our cybersecurity training. Uh, I know I was with Commissioner Davis yesterday, and he completed his um, in that time yesterday. So um, I appreciate his uh, leading by example. I'm I'm sure some of that, you know, I just wasn't involved with. Um, I got mine done. Okay, yeah, wasn't necessarily involved with that. So thank you. Um, so you know, with that, you know, the awareness of. Even if it's a text message, we're all really the target here. Um, a text message and an email that sounds like it could be urgent. Um, you know, stop, think, and take a moment before you might address it or respond just because uh, they're trying to catch us. So. so it's kind of interesting because, you know, Licky County actually had a cyber attack several years back and talking to folks there they believe it actually came through one of their transient buses i don't know how that could happen but uh consequently as you, as you mentioned we always need to be on guard because this could happen and be devastating I was taking um, one of the trainings that I, I take as sort of an elevated user, and it brought something to mind that, you know, caused me to adjust a little bit how I do something. So yeah. um, I think it's just it's just good for a rehashing and getting back to some basics for security. So. I was going to talk about the job fair. Uh, I will add about the job fair that there's some. Uh, increased uh, excitement this year with the folks from Post, uh, Post Factory. Uh, a lot of them have indicated that they'll be attending that and also employers who uh, are aware of that closing and interested in hiring some of those folks. So uh, we hope to make a lot of connections on Thursday evening. It's always good to have a good turnout when you have 60 employers there. Obviously, it's encouraging yes. for them to have additional yeah. People seek jobs. Expecting a good turnout on both sides. So. All right. I'm, coming out. I'm not looking for a job right now. But, uh, <laughs> That's yeah. Right. 
So please uh, rise if you're able and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation under God and the people of the world. Gail, any announcements? There are no announcements. So, approval of uh, minutes for October 8th, uh, 2024. So moved. Second. Discussion. Seeing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Fix. Yes. Commissioner Levesey. Yes. Minutes past two zero from the commissioners resolution twenty twenty four dash ten dot. Oh, I'm yeah. apologies. Yes. So approval of uh, budgetary minutes for October eighth, two thousand twenty four. Ten minute. Second discussion. Seeing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Fex. Yes. Commissioner Levesey. Yes. Budget hearing minutes past two zero from the commissioners resolution twenty twenty four dash ten dot fifteen dot a. A resolution approving an account for the account transfer in a major object expense category for the facilities budget general fund 1001. The commissioners I uh, move items A, B, C, and D and E. Second discussion. Um, there also is a resolution in here uh, moving forward and expense for common police court for the court for uh, recording equipment um, that was discussed in their budget hearing last week. Additional discussion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Fix. Yes. yes. Commissioner Levesey. Yes. Motion passes 2 0. In the Fairfield County on Age Board, Resolution 2024 10.15.m, a resolution to approve a reimbursement for share of costs for liability insurance paid to Corsa as memo expenditure for Fund 2066. So moved. Second discussion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Fix. Yes. Commissioner Levesey. Yes. Motion passes 2 0. The Fairfield County Board of Del Developmental Disabilities, Resolution 2024 10.15.g, a resolution to approve a memo expense memo receipt for the cost of transportation for individuals paid to Lancaster Fairfield Public Transit as a memo expenditure for Fund 2060, Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. So moved. Second. Discussion. Being done, roll call, please. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motion passes 2 0. From the Fairfield County Engineer, Resolution 2024-10.15.h, a resolution authorizing Jeremiah D. Up, Fairfield County Engineer, to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission State Capital Improvement Program and to execute contracts as required. So moved. Second. Discussion. It's a great program. Need to keep additional discussion. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motion passes 2-0. And the Fairfield County Prosecutor, Resolution 524-10.15.i, a resolution accepting Victims of Crime Act and State Victims Assistance Act grants for October 1st, 2024 through September 30th, 2025, grants to be administered by the County Prosecutor. So moved. Second. Discussion. Seeing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motion passes 2-0. Payment of Bills, Resolution 2024-10.15.J, a resolution authorizing the approval of payment of invoices for departments that need Board of Commissioners approval. Second. Second. Discussion. Being done, roll call, please. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Motion passes 2-0. The next regular meeting is scheduled for October 22nd at 9 a.m. Any additional item to come before the Board of Commissioners at this time? Just for the record, that when Commissioner Davis isn't here, we have a 27 minute meeting. So noted. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Now, now we're, we're going to this afternoon or early, I should say, go into, uh, into uh, budget hearings. Our day is not over with yesterday.